welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Rise Every Day Shit. I got the man, the myth, the legend. If you don't know this brother, you got to get to know this brother. And we're going to get to know him today, Mr. James. Do, do, I, do I pronounce it Du Bois? Did I, did I put the right emphasis on it? <laughs> du Bois. Du Bois. I got to put yeah. some respect on the man named Du Bois. Yes, oh, oh, good. Oh, How good. are you this morning, sir? Oh, good. I'm blessed, man. It's early. I appreciate you having me, man, taking the time to talk to me. Hey, where are you joining us from, just out of curiosity? I'm from uh, in L.A. I'm in oh, L.A. You live in L.A. Uh, so it's like we love 7 L.A. 8, 7 a.m. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm down here in good old sunny San Diego. So for, for okay. those people who may not know who James is, I always like to start off with this question. Who is James? And I know that's a deep question. You could take that as far as wide as you want to go. Who is James? Uh, that, that, that is a tough question. Uh, well, in essence, just in overall, I would say James is a person still trying to uh, learn and grow and, and, and get out the wilderness, if you will. Um, okay. Um, and, but professionally, you know, certainly I'm, you know, I'm the, currently the general manager, head of programming for Fox Soul, which is a uh, Fox's first OTT streaming platform. Uh -huh. I've been in the business for 20 plus years. I started off. Um, under my own band and doing a lot of reality shows, Keisha Cole, The Way It Is, and all those nice. iterations. Uh, Tiny and Toya, Mike Vick Project, Trey Songs, Hell Day, Comic View, so forth and so on, man. So I've been blessed to be able to do do this uh, this television thing for the culture for a long time. So that right. is sort of, you know, what I come from and who I am, uh, you know, just, just professionally. Yeah, we appreciate you doing that for the culture because I, I, I think, you know, uh, like we were saying before I jumped on, our stories need to be told. Like, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, the success, everything so that people can learn and grow and just, uh, you know, normalize every essence of black excellence. I don't know why the essence Absolutely. song came in my head, that Nigerian song. I don't know if you're familiar with the <laughs> Nigerian movement. Um, so... How, tell me, how did you get started in this game? Like, cause I know me as a kid growing up, like the the career I'm in right now, doing diversity, equity, and inclusion. That wasn't that was this that was not something that was in my forefront. Like, how did you get into your your career? Like, how did did you did you wake up? Are you seeing your, your your brother, cousin, or somebody doing? It? He's like, I'm gonna do that. Like, how how did you get into your your career journey? Nah, you know, I was really blessed. I think early on, I realized that I, I had a gift of storytelling. I had a gift of wanting to be creative outside of sports. This was the only thing I ever really wanted to do, um, which was which was a blessing. So even from, I would say, from junior high school to, uh, if you will, all the way through, is being creative and being able to tell stories and create things was a passion of mine. And uh, so I was able to go to Wake Forest University on a football scholarship. And a part of the reason that I also uh, selected to go to Wake Forest outside of the other schools that was recruiting me at the time was the fact that I had a great broadcast uh, communications department. And I knew early on that's what I wanted to uh, to pursue. High school, I was a DJ. I was in a rap group for, for a little bit. I had to get out of that because I was horrible at it. Uh, <laughs> but it was more uh, really being able to tell the stories that I felt like weren't being told um from our culture and about our people and so i just uh was blessed to know that that's all i've ever been able to do was was sports and, 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 and uh television entertainment like, I, I was about to have you spit a couple bars there in a second nah, you don't want to hear that i love that you were able to make uh the transition from football life to um to to career and then eventually executive like i feel like a lot of brothers have a hard time doing that like if the the, the football the sports things don't pop off how was how do you how were you able to do that well i'm not gonna say it was it was easy because you work so hard you grow up most kids like us grow up wishing to make it to some type of uh professional sports level if you come from the sports world so when that didn't work out as long as i thought it would it took me. It took me a few months to get over that. It was, it was very disappointing. I felt like I had failed because um, mm -hmm. I worked so hard for it. And uh, but at some point, you just got to get up. You just got to realize that there's more to you than just that. And after a while, I felt like that was my identity was the sports mm -hmm. world because I was having so much success at it. Um, but I was able to eventually, through mentors and talking to other people that have had to make that pivot, if you will. 
just just get back on it and, 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 and say, I'm going to do this better. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to uh, use my gifts that I have, and, and, and I'm going to continue on my path because if sports is over, I can't do nothing else but this. This is all I really love. So I've been able to pursue my passion, man. That, was, that made it a little bit easier to make the transition because mm-hmm. both things was really my passion. Yeah. Now explain that. Why is you know, really tapping in and knowing your passion so important when you're trying to achieve your dreams and goals? Well, life is hard, period, right? So, and especially in career-wise, if you're doing jobs or, or careers that you really don't have a passion for or love, the moment, and especially as entrepreneurs, so the moment the difficulties arises, either you're going to quit or jump to something else. We keep jumping and jumping and jumping. And, mm-hmm. and if it's not your passion, that's just the, the thing that we do. So I try to tell people, if you want to stop having to start over, stop quitting. Mm. You know, stay, stay the course and, and, and keep going. So having something that you're passionate about uh, gives you that energy when you don't have it. it. tells you to keep going when you want to give up because you actually truly love what you're doing. Yeah. So if you can find that passion, man, it's so important. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, that's something I often tell um, young folks when I go out and speak. I say, hey, do what you love, love what you do. Don't chase the money. Let the money chase you. And what I mean by that is when you do something that you're passionate about and you do it with such passion and 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 and, and authority and, and, and grace and elegance and people recognize it and they recognize that that gift that you have and they don't. They don't care that you don't know this, that, and the other. They want they want that thing that you possess that nobody else can bring into their organization, into their company, into their business, and they 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 will handsomely pay for 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 that to be because they can't get that. You can't replicate that anywhere else, at least to to me. Um, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, passion speaks for itself. I think you're absolutely correct in what you're saying. Yeah. I, I, absolutely, I agree with you 100. percent But so. So how, how has the industry changed in your world? I, I, you know, in the past couple of years, we've been in this pandemic and I feel like businesses, all businesses have changed to some degree. Um, what would you say has been the biggest shift in, in your industry in, the, in this past couple of years? Well, being able to still work virtually and have people work from home and still be as, as, as successful mm. or as effective um, has really taught us that. You had to pivot. Like I said, mm. sometimes life hits you with things that you have to really understand how to adjust to it. And so in the business, I think you'll see, I don't know if it'll ever go back to being the same where you're doing shows completely in the studio, everyone is in the office every day. Um, companies are saving money because people can work from home. I think people have been a little more effective in, 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 in what they're doing work-wise because they have an opportunity to not have to get in the car and drive an hour to work and then drive an hour home and deal with all that kind of stuff. Mm. So it's just uh, the, the, the uh, hybrid of being able to work in the office, get around people because you still need that camaraderie, if you will. But then also being able to produce from, from home, um, I think, was a game changer. And, it, and it's really helped us as a, as a network to grow as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like everybody's also been really doing their their self reflections of you know what what like what work life I don't want to say balance but harmony looks like and how do I show up as my best self in work and personal life? Um, what have you learned about yourself in the past year? Uh, man, that's a that's that's a great question. I try to learn something every day. Honestly, I think the main thing is. I still love what I do. Um, mm. I love my family because you're around each other now every day, all day. Uh, so, so, so the <laughs> pandemic will make you realize. <laughs> it's like, I love y'all, but sometimes yeah, yeah. y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, um, but that I still got a long way to go into in being my best self. Like, I don't feel like mm. I'm even close to what um, I should be in every area. Uh, <laughs> And, and I think that is having an opportunity to really read more, study more um, personally for, for personal reasons as well as professional reasons. It's really, this time has really taught me to reflect and really understand who I am um, and really understand what makes me my best self, not only for me, but for everyone that's around me. So I, I just want to be able to be an influence um, 
to other people in a positive way. And you can never do that if you're not a positive influence to yourself first. Mm, love that. Got to be a positive influence to yourself. Um, take care of self and then everything else will manifest in a way that you need it to manifest in your life. What mistakes have you made that you're still learning from? Man, I don't even know if we got that much time to live. Right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> man, I, I made, well, I've, I've made so many mistakes in life. Um, professionally, just understanding wealth and money, um, decision making, thinking I wanted this when I don't. So, I mean, I could go through a whole list, but the things I'm still learning from is really. Um, being patient and not rushing at things because and understanding business. Like I used to think creativity was enough. As long as I was creative, I was going to be all right. I, I completely didn't understand the business side of things, which caused me a whole lot of problems um, early on. And even now, when you, you go back to what I learned about myself, my mind is creative. And it's hard to have a creative mind and a business mind. So you got to get yourself with the right people um, that could do, like I said, work your strengths and, and partner with your weaknesses. And so I, I'm, I'm very clear on my weaknesses right now through my mistakes, which is, you know, again, my heart is big. Um, I just been an entrepreneur. I, I made a lot of mistakes not understanding what that really meant. And, and I felt like I had to hit every pothole to realize that's not the direction I want to go. I had to crash a lot. Um, and it, it's not understanding business. It's not understanding investing back into yourself. It's not understanding savings. It's not understanding a whole lot of uh, 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 of that aspect of it. Um, that that has affected, you know, me because you're constantly starting over. You're starting to rebuild. So, uh, but it's all a blessing, man. I'm still here. I'm still able to do what I do. Um, but yeah, I, I've. But I want to say this too. But mistakes is a part of it. As long as you learn from it, it's it's it, it it's not it is a mistake, and I don't ever want to change that. But you ain't gonna get to be successful. And you can read any book you want to, or talk to any successful person that you feel like that. Um, they had to make more mistakes than than doing the right decision, but they learn from that. So so I realized instead of beating myself up every day. Uh, for making the mistakes that, hey, it was necessary for me to grow and become the man and the person I want to be today, professionally as well as personally. Well, I, I love that you said that because it's a reminder that, you know, um, failure is not the end all be all. Like, it's part of the process. It's part of the growth yeah. process. I think Michael Jordan had that quote. I can't remember the exact numbers where he said, I, 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 I law, like, I, I had, like, I don't know, thousands of losses i was entrusted this many times to take the the game winning shot and fail uh and, and he just had a list of his failures and he's like and this is why i succeed <laughs> and right. i was like no, wow, absolutely that's powerful right because right. once you because you you learn a lesson from each failure and, the, and hopefully you grow from it to adjust to tweak it and i think that's kind of what entrepreneurship i think i think people don't see they see the glamorous side of entrepreneurship all the time but they don't see the process and that's what i'm learning to do myself learn learn to fall in love with the process like it, it ain't always gonna be perfect i'm gonna have to surround the surround the right team around me so i can stay grounded and, and stay focused on the, the the piece that i bring to the pay table whether it be the creativity or the business mind like you like like you have me and you have some similarities there so i'm, I'm really resonating with everything you're saying because <laughs> I, I got a little bit of that creative and and business how do you keep that balance like and, and stay grounded within that and within yourself because sometimes creativity is that far left thing and and business is this far left thing and you gotta put them somewhere in the middle because like you're like all right listen we can't spend a million dollars on the budget and it's creativity because we ain't got it here and it doesn't make dollars or make sense on the business side so how do you stay right. the balance between those two worlds well like i said i i stick to my strength which is being creative and then yeah. i partner with my weaknesses and when i say partner with someone that does what i don't do there's also one that's going to tell me no it's mm -hmm. going to make me un understand why they don't work creatively. I want to you know, always say I got champagne taste with beer money. You, you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, but you, so you got to have someone that's going to make you understand or at least challenge you to figure out how to get the champagne look with the beer money um, and not just overspend, overspend, overspend. And that was a big mistake that I made early on. So it's really just uh, 
having a real conversation with yourself, being honest with yourself. I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I know business, but I wouldn't say I'm a business minded individual. I'm a creative individual. And so I, I try to surround myself with people that know business. That's what they love. They love to grow business. They love to grow money. They understand all that. I don't, I don't really have a passion for that. So if you can combine those two, man, it's easy to stay down. And, when, and, and again, when life hits you upside the head from your mistakes, it'll teach you to be balanced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Um, uh, you are somebody that I feel like has really um, grown to be like a grounded individual, knowing who you are and having the right people around you. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of people trying to get, get to where you're at, like not professionally, groundedness, all that good stuff that we, we've been talking about. If someone doesn't know what or who grounds them what would you tell them well i mean at the end of the day to be quite honest with you the only person that can give you life and give you death is god and if nobody can give you those two precious things if you will then that's the person who ground you he giveth and he taketh away and life will show you that right so that's the that's the bigger picture if you will but Again, it goes back to you. Like being grounded is really about having a real conversation with you, man. Like we don't know everything. Nobody in this world knows everything about everything. Um, and the quicker you can tell yourself what you know and what you're good at and what you don't know and what you're not good at, then that is the beginning of being grounded. That is the beginning of understanding and life and understanding yourself. And, and, and you know, at the end of the day, life is about you incorporated. That's the first business you're ever going to run. I say this a lot of times is, if you don't know how to run you, you're never going to be able to run a business. You may have success for a while, but eventually it's going to it's, it's, it's going to fall because you don't know how to handle you. You don't know how to handle your emotions. You don't know how to handle success. You don't know how to handle failure. If you don't learn how to handle all the things that life is going to bring you, you can never have a, a, a successful business that's sustainable. And the key is to be sustainable. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a bar right there from from the former former all pro <laughs> all star rapper. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know how to run or handle the business of you incorporated, uh, hey, you have to work on yourself before you go out here and try to work on others and, and build the empire. Yeah. Oh, man, I love that. I love that. Thank you for drop, dropping that gem. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't have the most creative brother in the industry that that got his hands and everything and i asked this question uh to try to get a sneak preview of what we might see in the upcoming years uh what are you most excited about in the next year you know the, the every day man I, I wake up and i'm trying to grow fox so you know we'll be have our three-year anniversary january 13th of next year congrats, congrats um you know it's a difficult landscape thank you it's a uh, got a great team you know I'll, I'll, I'll be remiss to not to make sure that People understand that you can never be great by yourself. You always need a great team, right? So we're just trying to grow that, get into um, areas that the culture loves, music, fashion, travel. So I'm trying to touch every emotion that we go through every day. Um, so that's the long-term goal for Fox. So let's continue to build that where it becomes the premier destination for black content. Um, on a personal level, I'm, I'm, I do a lot of consulting. So uh, you know, me trying to get to a place by myself without helping others. Again, I'm always trying to lift as I climb. Um, so there's a lot of great opportunities that a lot of great talented people are are, are doing now. And I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to just look, sit back and, and know that I had uh, a hand in helping them better their lives and their careers as well. Yeah, each one teach one. It, uh, it takes a village, whatever quote you want to use. Like that, that's, Absolutely. that's, that's the win-win when you can give back and, and and pull others up with you. That's the win-win. So I love that. Right. Thank you. Um, what are some What are some things someone can do to be a creative thinker? Hmm. I, I don't know what you could do. I, I think again. I think being creative is a gift. Um, mm. Now, if you have a little a little a piece of that, you feel. You have to hone that in. You have to keep at it. You have to keep creating everything. A writer should write every day, right? A singer should probably sing every day. Whatever you feel mm -hmm. your gift is, you should just create and understand that the difficulty of getting to where you want to go is hard, but it's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to feel like that, right? Anything great is supposed to be 
something that you're willing to work for and, and cry over and stay up at night over and do all those things that most of us don't want to do. That's why we end up quitting. So if you have an inkling of being creative, I would say create. That That's the bottom line. And don't quit. Like, just create. Write it down. 90% of it is probably going to be horrible. Take it from me. More, <laughs> I, I've had more failures and more horrible ideas back than, than, I, than I can to think about. But the fact that you just keep creating a venture, all, all it takes is one. All you need is one, one, one thing. So, so just just work on your skill set. Like a basketball player goes to the court and shoots or runs or jumps and do something every day. You have to put in that work, man. Um, whatever it is, mentally or physically. Yeah, and I, and I feel like that's that's the key there. You got to put in the work. You got to put in the reps. Sometimes you got to take chances. You got to put yourself out there. Um, you got to have those failures, like you you always constantly say. Um, because I mean, what's on the other side of that? I mean, I, I guess I have to ask you, what, what's the disadvantage of playing things safe? Because I think sometimes people play it safe all the time and they play it too safe and they, they, they never get their dreams out. They never, they never create that thing that they always thought about creating. Um, so to you, what's, what's the disadvantages of playing things safe? You become stagnant. I mean, at the end of the day, you become stuck in the mud, so to speak. And then a year later, five years later, 10 years later, you realize you're in the exact same place because you was doing the exact same thing. You was playing it safe. You, you could have been running when you decided to jog or walk. You know what I mean? Um, and I think in order to get out that space, the first, the first thing you got to do is not give a damn what anyone thinks, what anyone says. You have to really believe in you 100%. Surround yourself with people that's going to pour into you positively and not project their limitations on you. Never allow someone else's limitations to become your limitations, right? So the disadvantages of a plan is safe is you probably won't accomplish everything that God may have for you. You have to have that faith to know that I, I'm, I'm going to fly one way or the other. Um, so plan is safe wouldn't allow you and me to be having this conversation. You probably wouldn't have did what you're doing right now and, and blessings to you, continue doing what you're doing. I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing because after all the mistakes, I probably would have quit. You know what I mean? So playing is safe is is, is 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 being uncomfortable. And a lot of us don't like to be uncomfortable. And growth, everything you think about in life that grows to something beautiful is uncomfortable. All the skyscrapers that we adore when we're driving down these big cities and seeing, remember, they all started deep in the mud first. And then they all started one brick at a time. I know it sounds cliche, but it's so true. That is life. You're going to get dirty and ugly um, um, uh, if you're going to accomplish anything great. But if you want to play it safe and stay clean and not get dirty and not feel the stress, that's fine. Then five years later, you're going to be frustrated with yourself because you're in the exact same place that you was because mm. you didn't want to move. Mm. So true. Now, you had said something in there that just really hit me deep in my soul. Um, you said sometimes we let other people's limitations of what they think about us limit us break that down what does that mean well a lot of people tell you what you can't do and, and it ain't really what you can't do they're telling you what they can do, mm. right so you'll start to believe it for yourself when it ain't really true they're just projecting on you their limitation mm. um and you got to be able to fight through that man because it could be family it could be people that really love you it you telling me it could that, be family family it could kids. be family because I'm sure you grow up with people who like, oh, I'm, you know, how you do that? Or why'd you do that? Or you ain't going to be able to do that. I don't know if you ever heard that. It could be family, close friends. And not that they mean you any ill will. They just don't know because it's not in them. And so people will, will, will always want to be uh, heard and express their opinion, even if it's wrong. Um, so, so a lot of people have limitations and, 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 and fear. Limitations is really just born out of fear at the end of the day. So don't allow somebody else to put their fear on you and keep you from your greatness. And, 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 you know, don't be afraid to fail. That's really what it comes down to. Don't be afraid to fall. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't, don't worry about people poking fun at you or laughing at you or all that kind of stuff, man. It, it, don't, it doesn't matter. That's what I mean when I say don't allow the fear or the limitations of others to become yours. Yeah, I love that. Thanks for breaking that down. Um, I feel like this is one of the things that uh, is really relevant sometimes in our black communities. Uh, and I remember Jay-Z talking about this on, on the, uh, I think it was a Hot 97 interview. 
He's like, I remember my uncle used to say to me, oh, you mm. think you a rapper now? You, you Just because you sell a little bit of records. You, like, and, and, and then I had this goal of selling $100,000. You, you ain't going to never sell $100,000. How do you think you're going to do that? Like, you can't do that. And he's like, I sold 100,000 records a thousand times. <laughs> right, right. No, no. Great line. I, no, I, I, absolutely. And it goes back to what I was actually saying. That's exactly what I mean. Like other people, they, they may not have your vision, but God didn't give you give them that vision for a reason. They gave it to you. But, you know what I mean? He gave it to you for a reason. So 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 use that. Yeah, love that. Now now you um you were a guy that's collaborated with a lot of different people in the industry mm-hmm. and, and other folks to to, to build just this uh, amazing array of shows and and just um and also you're in the season of collaborating now as a as a as a as a consultant and helping to live others up lift others up and, and just mm-hmm. you know um co-create things uh what have you learned in past experiences when you collaborate with others the main thing if you look at my body of work it is you never know what a person is dealing with you never know what a person is going through um and first of all, to be blessed to collaborate with some of what I consider some of the greatest creative talent um, in the world. The one thing that we always had in common is we all struggle. Be it family, be it personally, be it whatever. Um, and we all gonna fall. Man. And, and, and so what I've learned is that the constant not everyone can can uh, relate to success or whatever that success is, I should say. But the success that most people think about, not everyone can relate to that. But one, what what everyone can relate to is struggle. Is struggle, and so I've learned it from Keisha Cole, for instance, prime example. And I'm always indebted to her because that was my first show under my own company and she she could have went to anybody but she she allowed me to do that because she saw something in me as well is nobody knew if you watch the shows all the things that young lady had to carry on her shoulders were her family her mother all that you wouldn't have never known that you just been enjoying the music and listening to the music from michael vick when we did his show when he walked out of prison from the door fighting thing and having to start from ground zero and start over again and look at the brothers doing now um Trey Songz, his afterwards, his first big tour was on the Blueprint 3 tour with Jay-Z and Jeezy. We had an opportunity to follow him and do a show about that. But that's that fear that I need to be great. This is my opportunity. So we all that that's the main thing is that I try to find people to collaborate with that's really honest about who they are overall. Like not just trying to show you the good side, but I'm going to show you the difficulties and the struggles and the fears that I have as well. Because more people can, can 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 relate, you know what I mean? If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, it totally makes sense. So you know, I had an aha moment when you were talking because, um, so I grew up in D.C. when it was the murder capital, right? And mm-hmm. I was one of those kids that I, I was. I, I grew up. My 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 biological dad wasn't in my life. You know, black black kid story in and out of jail. Um, mm-hmm. Never really got to know the man, uh, but. Grew up in D.C. Um, when it was the murder capital, one of the kids that, you know, on that school to prison pipeline, I said I had ADD, I couldn't learn anything and so forth. Um, and then I remember when uh, there was a teacher that, that knew my backstory when I was out there speaking to the kids, but I, I only told them the story of the success after I had the mentor who came in, changed my life. And then I'm, I'm working this this corporate job now and so forth. So I used to like get rid of the the because I was ashamed of that story, right? Of, of the the man that I was, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and I would never tell that part of the story. It's like you know, you need to tell that part of the story. The kids will resonate with that more, and they'll see themselves in you. And as soon as I I, I, I got vulnerable enough to share that piece of the story, there's like. Dang, I didn't know you was from the block like us. Like, I, 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 and that's when they started to receive the information mm-hmm. I was trying to give them, like to try to help them course correct or give them whatever the tools they need. But they didn't want it. They didn't want anything to do with me before that. It's like, ah, oh, this guy, he middle class black dude, trying to tell us how right. how how we could, you know what I'm saying? So like, I, I resonate with, and I did, and it took me a while to learn that. But it seems like you were able to do that early on. Um, how did you? How did you know that? Like, how did you know that 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 was the connecting piece that really gets people together and, and really draws people into the story to really learn and grow? Well, I didn't always know that because I kept a lot of things to myself. 
Um, and I kept a lot of my pain and struggles to myself, which caused me bigger issues down the line. But the more I started having conversations and talking about the difficulties, I noticed that more people start opening up to me and comfortable enough to tell me about their difficulties. But when you start talking about just success, you can only talk to a certain few people because people are still dealing with things, right? They don't get to see the success, if you will, because they're blinded by what they consider a lifetime of struggle. And that's not necessarily the case. You just need someone to talk to and let you know that 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 that's that's light within the darkness. Um, and, and that's what I try to, you know, to show people. So if you have a conversation like you just said, the story you just told, you realize when people realize they could relate to you, they want to cheer for you. They want to understand because they they that that's that's who they are as well. Mm, I like that. Everything is relatability. Relatability. I love that. I love that. Um, I think also in the, the the struggle, and and we all still go through struggle. You know, sometimes we get stuck. Like when you get that place that's stuck. I know for me, getting us stuck sometimes mm-hmm. it was a mentor, or, or or you know just having conversations like these with people like yourself. Um, if, if you don't have that person, uh, let's say, what are like one to, you know, two or three questions should someone ask when they feel stuck that that could probably help them get unstuck? Who, who are they asking? Uh, themselves. Right. So the only thing I would tell people, just remember, man, the, and I think Jay-Z said it, uh, you referenced him a little bit ago. You said somebody asked him what was the, the most, uh, I think the greatest thing or whatever, the smartest thing he's ever done. And his reply was, the genius thing that we did was we didn't quit. That's it. We didn't quit. Not that I was able to do this transaction or meet this person. The simple fact that we didn't quit, right? And so the people you can just tell yourself, first of all, have faith. Understand that if God put it on you, he meant for you to finish that thing. Right? So don't quit. And no matter how difficult it gets, just know it's supposed to feel like that. Greatness is supposed to hurt. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Ask anyone that considers themselves great at anything or who you may consider great at anything, and I guarantee you they could speak a long time about the pain they had to endure and fight through to get to that greatness. So if you're stuck or you feel um, disheartened or, or you can't make it, just remember the greatest people in the world that you admire, the one thing you will always have in common it's neither of you quit, so don't quit. Everybody's journey is going to be different. You got a mentor, I got mentors, it's all different. Your path is different from mine. That's never going to be the same. But the one thing you and I or anyone else in this world will always be able to relate to is when we wanted to quit, we did it. Man, never quit. I'll always bet on Stay you. Stay the course, bro. Stay the course. Well, and that, that goes to, I think that leads into consistency too. Like if, if you stay the course and you stay consistent, you know, eventually, eventually you're going to land on something, right? Um, a, a, a broken clock is right at least twice a day. You know, even the garbage can has faith, like, because it, 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 it's going to get a stake one day, right? <laughs> Somebody going to finish that one. So so you got to have faith, stay, and, then, and and never give up. So I love that. Love that. Um what, what's a skill that you think everyone should have and why? A skill that everyone should have? Yeah. The skill of not quitting. I mean, that, that's really it, man. Like, <laughs> that's that, the thing like, right there. Like we, we, we all have different skill sets. We all have gifts that we've been blessed with. Not everyone has the same. I, I'll never be LeBron James. I'll never be, you know, none of that. I don't have that, that, that gift. I wasn't blessed with those skill sets. But, but what I do have is the fact that I'm going to work hard and never quit. So if you could just instill yourself in that, and, and again, remind yourself that it's all about you, like you incorporate it. like how you talk to yourself every day, what you tell yourself every day, um, it's the most important conversation that you're ever going to have. Not what someone else tells you, not what someone else believes in you. If you don't believe in yourself and tell yourself that I got to keep going, nothing you hear, or read, or see is not going to change your mindset at all. You have to really know if you're on an island all by yourself, I'm going to make this shit work one way or the other, period. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. Now, this is the part where, you know, I like to start to go into the the, the, the career phase, the entrepreneurship phase, and ask a little questions about that. So, mm-hmm. usually, when I used to talk to students, and um, whether they 
fresh out of high school or they just getting out of college, like the college students, they like to say, oh, man, I got my degree now. I should have this big corporate job. I should be making six figures. I was like, nah, I don't work that way. You Sometimes you got to start from the bottom, work your way up. <laughs> it's like, nah, but I put in all this time. I put in the reps, right? And I was like, yeah, but you, you that, that's just the education part. Now you got to you do the actualization part, right? Right, right. Um, or some people have limiting beliefs about like, all right, if, 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 if I don't get into this thing like right out the gate, like in the entertainment industry or being a creative or whatever, then it, 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 that's not going to work. I need to go to plan B. Um, and I, I try to highlight everybody's first job so they can sh- show them like, the, like, look, that's not where we started. Like, look, there, here's my first job and here's where I'm at now. Right. So there's progression right. to this. Right. So what was your first job? I started as a, as a production assistant, man. I was a gopher. Go get coffee, go get donuts, go get whatever <laughs> anybody needed. Um, you know, like most of us, that, that was, I, I literally really started from the, 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 the lords of the entry-level position that you can get into. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't want to do that. I'm thinking I'm coming from sports. I'm coming from education. I ain't come to be getting people's coffee and donuts. But it, right. taught, it taught me a, a, a valuable lesson. Like, like, there is a process to this thing. And the more you rush the process, the longer it actually is going to take, the faster you try to go, um, the longer you actually going to take to get there. Now you can't look at some people that made it pop and feel like nobody's an overnight success. Even Denzel Washington said it took him 25 years to become an overnight success. You know, there is a process to everything in life. Man. Uh, we grow, we go from toddlers to, 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 to kids, to young adults and so forth. There is a process. That's the way life works. But just remember that, that when you get tired again and you get impatient, if you start to speed up and do things that you shouldn't know you shouldn't be doing because you're trying to cheat the process or or cheat the timing of it and make it yourself, eventually you will crash and have to start over again anyway. And then you're going to be further behind than you would have been if you just stayed the course. So true. So true. Um, what, what, now, let's go into practical pieces. What were you what would you say or what were the steps that you took to get into your career and starting your business? What would you say were some of those steps that, that you, you took that helped you get to um, where you're at? Well, I, I always had an entrepreneurial spirit, so I knew that was that was my ultimate goal. Um, mm-hmm. And quite honestly, in 2005, I just jumped off the window. I just jumped out the window and said, I'm doing it. Oh, wow. Um, and, you had a leap of faith. And I, I did. I, I really did. I believed in it. I believed in myself. I believed in my ability. Uh, I was scared to death. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and when I first did it, it, it took me a long time. It took like a good eight months. Like I didn't make no money. It was it was scary, man. I wanted to like question myself that I make the right decision. I left a great job um, mm. to do it, but but it turned out really well. And 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 so as I got success. You know, uh, again, goes back to working on you. I wasn't prepared for the success that came. I wasn't. I had a lot of issues internally that I had never fixed, and it caused me more pain than harm. So success mm-hmm. ain't always the best thing for you. A blessing given too soon ain't a blessing at all. So mm-hmm. you got to uh, get yourself right first. So, you wait, right say that. First. Say that again for the people in the back. Say that again. Yeah, a blessing given too soon ain't a blessing at all. You ain't, mm-hmm. you ain't ready for that blessing. It, it could, it, it'll do you more harm than anything, man. So be careful what you ask God for, because He knows when you're ready and when you're not ready. And it, although sometimes He may have to teach you by giving it to you, just to show you yourself, you wasn't ready for this. You did, you questioned my timing. You was not ready for this. Mm. Now, it, ironically enough, my next question I was going to ask you was, what's one good life lesson life has taught you? And I, I have a feeling that was it, but you got so many bars in you. I don't know. <laughs> you might pull something else out of that. <laughs> nah, I, I, life has taught me to respect the process, man, first and foremost. But also, it's taught me to learn me every day. I'm on a journey of learning myself and growing and being better every day. Um, and when you do that, you'll realize the outside stuff, the businesses and the things like that, it just becomes inherently easier for some reason. It's because mm. I know what I want. I know what I don't want. I know who I am. I know what I can't do. Right. Um, I know my weaknesses still. I know where I still need to grow at. I know me more today than I ever have in my life, which doesn't enable me to make better decisions. Mm. I love that. I love that. Now, what is some advice you would give to someone who would like to start a career in your industry? Start. Yeah. Start. Start. That's, that's it. That's it. 
I can't tell you do this. There is no blueprint for this, man. Don't let nobody tell you uh -huh. do this, do that. Start and build genuine relationships. Uh -huh. Genuine relationships and make everything you do about the win-win. Don't always go look to withdraw. Your mm -hmm. first, your first thing you should want to do is how can I deposit into this relationship? How can I make a deposit, be it a penny or a million dollars, into this relationship? Mm -hmm. And then you'll start to, to get something for it and make sure other people want to deposit it into you. So imagine mm -hmm. you and your partner both wake up saying, how can I deposit instead of how can I withdraw? Mm -hmm. Think about that. If you're mm -hmm. trying to make a deposit and they're trying to make a deposit every day is their first mindset. Think about what that does. If you're only trying to withdraw and they're trying to withdraw, you're going to leave stuff empty. Mm. Yeah, I hope y'all caught that. My man giving y'all life changing like bars here to talk about how can I make the positive instead of withdrawal. That will change your life, your relationships tenfold. So that, that that's you you giving some gems today, man. I didn't know I was gonna wake up to this. <laughs> you, you feeding my soul, not just the fox soul. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, that's in everything, man. Personally and professionally, if you you know married or girlfriend or whatever, if you wake up thinking how can I deposit into that person's life, and they're thinking about how can they deposit into your life, think about how much better your relationship would be. You're actually looking to make each other better. Right. So so now I'm gonna rebuttal you just just for the sake of rebuttaling you, uh, oh, like like. James, I, I, man, I know I could just start, like, but like, uh, I need to know where. Where do I start? Like, I, you know, and 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 I'm just a, I'm just a college student. Uh, like, mm -hmm. I, I ain't got nothing to offer. I ain't got what. What am I going to deposit in somebody? They, they got way more than me. First of all, uh, okay, who I don't know whatever direction this person or individual is trying to go. Go try to find a place and tell them you're willing to start at the bottom, right? You're already 90% ahead of everyone, uh, you know, ahead of 90% of the people because most people walk into jobs and they want at least the entry, the middle level job. They don't want to start at the bottom. They don't want to start in the mail room. They don't want to start going and get coffee and so forth. So get into a place where you can actually be quiet and actually learn, right? That's how you start. And then you start to build relationships. Show people who you are by your work ethic. And that's how you really start in any business. But if you want to get into this business, be willing to start from the bottom. Don't look at all the, the bright lights, what everyone else you think is experiencing and so forth, because um, it's hard to start at that at that level. Yeah. So I would just say be willing to start at the bottom and let people know you're willing to start at the bottom. Yeah. Um, and that's a great start. And then find somebody that... Um, you know, you can start building that relationship with, man. But but you got to understand, if you don't know someone and you're like, hey, I want you to mentor me, they, they want to know why. Like, what is it about you that time is all we have? You can't get that back. So if I'm going to waste my time trying to help and do something, what what am, what am I going to get out of that? When I say get out of that, am I going to see you really work hard? That's all I really want to see. Am I going to see you stay the course and do what you need to do? Or you're going to jump around because you're looking for that 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 big that big um, hit really fast. So start at the bottom be willing to do that and let your work ethic um take you there because uh, again this last thing i'll just simply say now i want people to remember this talent is not enough so don't let your talent take you to places that your character can't keep you mm, i love that i love that and, and another thing i add to that too is um People have to be willing to start from the bottom. I think sometimes uh, our, our pride or our ego gets in the way of that, right? Like I ain't gonna do, yep. I ain't gonna get no call me. I ain't nah, I don't, I'm above that, right? Um, and, and sometimes you might have to humble yourself just a little bit. <laughs> no, listen, I'm gonna tell you a funny story. I work for a company called Brad Lockman Productions. Who's my mentor, great man. Took me in, took a liking to me. Literally, I worked for him as a PA. I started off. A month in, he came into his office. I was sitting in his chair with my feet on his desk and says, hey, I, I ain't come here to be a PA. This, I'm better than this. This is a month into my job. Uh -huh. he, he fired me. Uh -huh. I learned that lesson. He brought me back as a PA. And from there, I never made that mistake again. So I'm telling you from experience, humble, be willing, no matter what degrees you have, no matter what, when you want to start something from scratch, be willing to work from the bottom and be humble about it. Take it all as a blessing. Well, I love that. I love that. 
So now, what, what do you think the future has in store for your industry? Uh, I, I, I know uh, I, ever since George Floyd era, I, I've been seeing more black content, the hyping up of black creators on even these white networks. So what, 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 right. what are we looking like? What's the future look like? What is it? <laughs> has I think the future is bright, man. I, I think what's happening is, is we're starting to take control of our own narrative. And we'll start not to be afraid to, to use our voice where places that we um, haven't had the opportunity to do so. And I think a lot of more places like Fox Soul is, is becoming available for us to actually really speak our voice the way we normally would. You know, normally we only would talk about things in the privacy of our own homes since we didn't know how the outside world may take it. And now we're, we're losing that fear and we have an outlet that welcomes us to, to speak our voice and our truth. Um, so I think the future is bright for us as long as we continue to collaborate and work together and, and help each other, lifting as we climb, get to where we want to go, and continue to express in ourselves um, unapologetically. I think the future is very bright for all of us. Love that, love that. So now um, I, I like to keep my podcast a drive time, so we won't end it off like like this. Uh, or what used to be a drive time. I don't know what what people do now and that, that <laughs> if they work it from home. Mm-hmm. Um what projects are you currently working on and where can people find you? Right. So, you know, Fox Soul is my project. That is that is, <laughs> that is the main thing we're doing. We're trying to grow this network. Find it at uh, foxsoul.tv. We're also on 19 different distribution platforms, YouTube TV, Samsung TV Plus, Roku, uh, Amazon. So anywhere you go up and consume your, your, your content in the mornings or throughout the day, um, you, you should go look for Fox. So we're giving you, I think, what the culture wants. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. So y'all make sure y'all check out Fox. So all my Nigerians out there over in Africa, y'all check it out too. get tapped into the culture. Um, we all want people. Uh, James, my brother, I'm so honored and blessed to have you on this platform. Thank you so much for blessing us Thank with you. all the gems. Uh, any last words for the people before we depart? Now, thank you for having me, first of all, brother, and uh, continue doing what you're doing. I, I consider it an honor that you even thought enough for me to have me on your platform. And then for the people that are listening, bottom line is just don't quit. Just don't quit. No matter what it feels like, don't quit. There you go. You have it. Just don't quit. Never give up. This has been another episode of Rise Every Nation, and we'll catch you on the next time.